Hello, my name is Keats Webb and I'm a digital imaging specialist at the Smithsonian's Museum Conservation Institute. I will be presenting updated methods for digitization of daguerreotypes through this digital recording for Mel Wachowiak and myself. The presentation will cover a variety of imaging techniques that can be affordable and accessible for documenting daguerreotypes, while a couple of the techniques are more research-based requiring higher-end equipment and skill level. I apologize that neither of us were able to be there in Baltimore to present this in person. Hopefully you will still find our presentation informative. Mel and I both work at the Smithsonian's Museum Conservation Institute, which is a center for specialized technical collection research and conservation for all Smithsonian museums and collections. We are located off the mall in Suitland, Maryland, among some of the collection storage facilities. The imaging studio of MCI utilizes scientific and computational imaging techniques to aid in research and conservation of cultural heritage objects. Before I get too far along, I would like to introduce the imaging team at MCI. First, I will introduce Mel Wachowiak, senior conservator who is trained as a furniture conservator, but has added imaging to his list of specialties and skills. I am a digital imaging specialist working with Mel to document museum objects using scientific and computational methods. While Mel and I are documenting the physical nature of objects from micro to macro and larger, Ed Vicenzi, a material scientist at MCI, is looking closely at the chemical structure at the nanoscale, illustrating this integration of scale and the physical and chemical research at MCI. Last but not least is Allison Rabent who was with us over the summer from Rochester Institute of Technology and was working closely with the imaging and analysis of Abe, whom you will meet shortly. Allison is currently in the audience here in Baltimore. Our next two characters to introduce are Abe and Clara, the two daguerreotypes that we have been closely investigating over the past several months. We could come up with some creative stories to describe these two young folks and the lives they lived but we will let you use your imagination and just say that not much is known about either in terms of the character backgrounds and the lives they lived. Abe came in with a study collection to the National Museum of American History and Claire was purchased on eBay. You will be seeing their faces quite a bit throughout the presentation. In working with Ed Vicenzi and the National Museum of American History to learn more about the elemental and chemical structure of daguerreotypes to help with the understanding of the preservation of these objects, Mel and I have worked with a variety of imaging techniques to document the physical nature of these objects. Daguerreotypes are particularly challenging surfaces to image, as many of you probably already know. As seen in this short video clip of a daguerreotype of Mel made by Mike Robinson, the highly reflective surface of the metal reacts like a mirror, scattering light and ensuring reflections, glares, and hot spots. They also have a small viewing angle between the positive and negative image. Material on the surface, such as pigment, pigment biological growth, and dust, along with scratches and tarnish, can be problematic. And the protective cases, such as a union case, add another reflective surface and can lead to unwanted shadowing. So, daguerreotypes are tough to document. But, why is it so important to record these images? Daguerreotypes in the United States mark the beginning of recorded American history, making them essential pieces of our national and visual heritage. Aside from documenting and preserving this heritage, imaging is a critical practice in conservation. Imaging in the realm of conservation documents the object, establishes the object's condition, records exa examination, sampling, scientific investigation, and treatment, aids in the care and informs future care and treatment, and increases the understanding of an object. Along with the objective to, of better understanding the physical structure through imaging and analysis at the micro level, there is an urgency of documenting the image and condition at the macro and micro level, not knowing when and how the surface will be affected by aging, display, and handling. The surface of a daguerreotype is fragile and sensitive with the possibility of losing part of the image by just a touch with your finger. Taking a conventional still image with a digital camera does capture the image in current condition. But there are several other techniques that document the surface and condition, potentially adding more information for research and conservation. 
This is a graphic that illustrates the imaging techniques we have investigated and used to document daguerreotypes and includes visible light techniques and multispectral techniques. We will first take a look at the visible light imaging techniques, which are broken down by illumination, normal, raking, and specular. One of our initial imaging techniques involved modifying a flatbed scanner. Having seen images online of a scanner modified for the purposes of digitizing daguerreotypes, we wanted to see if we were capable of modifying a scanner and how it would compare to other imaging techniques. A line scanner with the single line array of the lighting and the pixels traveling linearly makes the scanner ideal for reflective surfaces. The incidence angle of the light is fixed and is analogous to normal light photography in the most ideal of situations. There is not the same concern of light scatter and reflection that normal photography poses, but the scanner can only produce the equivalent of visible light photography with normal illumination, while other setups have the potential of being used for multiple techniques. We modified a $130 compact document scanner used for prints and film to test the imaging capabilities of this method. Scanners can have a very minimal depth of focus since all objects used on a document scanner are flat or will be flattened by the lid of the scanner with the optimal focus distance being at the sur surface of the cover glass. With concern for both the fragile surface of the daguerreotype, not having this surface come in contact with anything, in addition to the shallow depth of focus of the scanning optics, it was necessary to remove the cover glass, but the cover glass also acts as tracking for the lighting array and scanner. The cover glass was replaced by a similarly sized plexiglass frame that had an open area in the center for the object and material along the edges acting as runners. Having removed the scanner lid earlier, the scanner was inverted and positioned on a clear plastic box with a window removed corresponding with the dimensions of the plexiglass frame. A side of the clear plastic box was cut out to give access to a lab jack knob to raise and lower the object for placement and focus. The daguerreotype was placed on the lab jack, then slowly and carefully raised into place via the knob. Periodic scans were needed to check the focus and placement of the daguerreotype until it was in place. The final scan took a little over 10 minutes and resulted in a 1.65 gigabyte file with a pixel dimension of nearly 14,000 by 16,000 pixels. Note the color reference that includes a measurement scale in the top image. We use a color card and measurement scale for all of our imaging techniques as a standard and reference for measurement and accuracy. The even and fixed nature of the lighting of a scanner is ideal for highly reflective objects like daguerreotypes, but the process is not necessarily ideal for the fragile nature of the objects. A flatbed scanner can be one of the least expensive imaging techniques we note, with a capture device costing $130 or more, which does not include the time or tools required for modification. The scanning will create high-resolution images with consistency and reproducible conditions when working with a collection and even re-imaging objects for condition documentation, which is a great benefit. Unfortunately, the process is risky. Placing an object on a lab jack and slowly raising it closer and closer to a moving light and scanning array with the threat of the two colliding. There's not great visibility for the operator raising the object, and there's little way to fix this fine-tuned fo focusing. This focusing positioning process can be timely with the need to scan and rescan until the object is in place and repeating this for each object. Not all daguerreotypes are the same thickness. This is a process that needs to be customized for each object.